So this, as you might recognize, are the Lee & Lee SL120 Uni fans. They're one of my favorite fans that we've ever used around here because of the interlocking functionality, the fact that you can daisy chain up to four of them, and you have four per channel with the little control box, meaning 16 fans with a total of only, well, eight wires, if you include the RGB wires. And these made a huge splash in the uh, PC community when it comes to both performance and it comes to lighting and ease of use and cable management. Well, you know what? No one wants to play with this crap anymore because the V2s are now out. And if elementary school taught me anything, it's two is better than, it doesn't say V1, but it, that's a one. So two is better than one. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. You know, I wasn't even planning on doing a video about the Unifan SL120 V2 because it was my understanding initially that the only thing they really changed was the connector. Because my biggest problem with these connectors right here, this is the V1, um, it was a really unique design where it just pops off. You can see it's just a little contact pad with push pins. You line up the tab and you slide it on. Up to four fans will have one JST um, RGB header and one PWM fan header to use with their control box. And that was simple enough. The problem is the first time I started, you know, actually building with it, this height right here, it's about uh, maybe five millimeters. It's not a lot, maybe five or six millimeters thickness. I don't have my calipers or I would measure. The bottom line is, if you went to put this on a radiator and this right here was on the side where the fittings are, the fittings more often than not barely clear the fans as it is. So adding this, would interfere, which means you'd have to flip it around the other direction. So this side right here with the exposed contact pads would be up against the fittings. Now that wasn't a problem, it wasn't touching the fittings, so there wasn't a shorting issue there. What it did is it forced which way you're... I just hit myself. You yes. <laughs> it would force which way your fans had to go to be able to clear this. And the problem is sometimes this would then be facing the front of your system and then you have to route them back behind and the cables are not that long to begin with. So it became a cable routing issue, became the fact that you couldn't change where the wire came off and you were just really shoehorned into a certain direction at the fans. And then as I found with the Spectre 3 build, length was a severe problem. Now they do sell extension cables. You can get a G JST extension cable, which is not a big deal. And you can get a PWM fan header extension cable. The point is it's something that you would need to make them work in your build potentially that doesn't come with it. And that's typically a problem. Now with the AL120s, and then specifically, see the AL120, what it did was it changed the point of where it mounted from a little bit less on the side to a little bit more in the middle, like this. But you still had it coming out one side and you were forced to have to either run the cable over um, and then you couldn't necessarily flip it around any direction that you wanted. So I, it was an improvement. And then the Infinity Mirror, uh, the Infinity version of the SL came out, which then had a thinner ribbon cable that mounted squarely in the center. And I say ribbon, it's just, it was very flat. You could then flip it either direction, but you still had this thickness to deal with, which would interfere with fittings and such on radiators, or even potentially um, AIOs, if you want to add these fans to AIO, or really small tight cases that the fans would barely fit in, but do exist, this could still be a problem. So this, this is why I went, okay, well the V2 just fixes that problem by changing the cable. It's really not all that much worth talking about. And that's where I was wrong because they changed quite a bit with the fan. Not only did they change the um, cable itself, and I'll show you what comes in the single pack first, and then I'll show you what comes in the three pack, because you can use these with, you don't have to use their controller. It's just their controller allows you to be able to take full control over fan control, lighting control, with their own software, the, v uh, the L Connect 3. But on the surface, they look identical, right? This is just a white version. This is a black version. They look identical. One thing that they did change that I like is on the back, if you look at the hub, it's also a machined 
sticker on there. It doesn't show all the writing that you would find on the back of the hub, which usually has them. What kind of motor is it? What's the amps? What's the watts? All that sort of stuff, right? The RPM fan range. So it's a lot nicer to look at. This may not translate very well on, on camera, but it's three millimeters thicker. So this is a 25 millimeter thick fan, which is standard. That's, I mean, the two sizes you tend to find are 25 mil thick, which is standard, or 15 mil, which is a slim. This is a 28 millimeter. Now 28 millimeter allowed for 10% more airflow and increased static pressure, making them the perfect fan to overcome any sort of resistance. What resistance would that be? Mesh panels uh, in the front of your case, radiators, heat sinks. Um, it just allows for a little bit more pitch on the fans so it could be a little bit more aggressive, scoop more air, creating more pressure and more airflow. Also too, it does have brighter lighting than the V1 and a denser LED array, giving it a better smoothness to those light, the lighting effects, rather than seeing maybe some hot spots where it goes through the diffuser where you can see where the individual LEDs are. So it's improved lighting, it's improved airflow, it's in, because of the fact that they're thicker. And the cable, if you look on this side, looks similar, right? It's got the same contact pad looking deal. Oh, and it's also got these guys here. This is one of the things that the uni fans were known for is these little slides right here, which hold the fan next to it in place. If you're not going to be using another fan on the end, these can interfere with radiators. So just like the V1s, these guys do just twist off of there. But if we look at the cable, this is where it's got the contact push pins again, but you'll see that they kind of come up with this hybrid system where it, it still is thin enough to where it's not gonna interfere with the radiator fittings or anything like that, but the cables are thin enough to where you can route them either direction without having to have that stupid plastic cover piece. The flat tab piece right here, that pushes down the contact pins so that they're out of the way, they're insulated and like isolated from anything near them that can touch them because that is just used with the second cable, which actually comes in the three pack because you can now daisy chain this via cable to another fan. Typically the daisy chaining happened physically by interconnecting the cages and then the end fan would just sit exposed with this piece showing. But now you have a connector cable that will allow you to go from here to another fan via a wire. Perfect example, you have a 360 or a 240 radiator on top or case fans on top of your case and you've got the rear exhaust fan that you typically find. So instead of having to run another wire to that rear exhaust fan from the control box, which I've had to do before, I can now run a wire that goes from the fan on the top, the last fan on the top, to that particular fan in the back of the case. And they all are on the same channel and it adds one wire between them. No more wires to have to manage on the back side of the case, which is nice. Let's say what the way cable management is in certain cases, you're like, okay, I want this fan pulling air through let's say the bottom of like a 011 dynamic or something like that, right? That's how, that's a very typical layout. It is a upflow or an updraft case, which means all the air comes in from the bottom or the motherboard tray and then exhausts out the top. So I know what the way cable management is in that case, it is better to have that cable on the right because of the fact that there's a cable grommet right there. But if I had a radiator here with fittings right there and I knew that that wasn't gonna clear, on these fans here, if this plastic piece isn't gonna clear the fittings, then I had to flip the whole thing around like this. And as you can see, the cables are now coming out the front, which would be ugly. Route those back like that, and then come back around and go that way. Well, look, that's all the wire I have left. And there is a grommet over here, technically. And then that's all the wire that I have left. You'd be surprised what a difference six inches can make. But on the V2, you can see now, this is clearly not in the way, but let's say it was the opposite situation. I need this cable on this side because that's the way that case works. Well, I can flip it that way. And then just take this cable, smoosh it down flat, check that out. It's still not gonna interfere. It's such a simple little change that didn't even occur to me the first time we reviewed the SL fans until I went to use them on a radiator that I realized this actually interferes with so many radiator uh, radiators when it comes to fittings and such. So I would have to flip the whole thing around and then have it clear that way, having the wire stick out the wrong side. Something else that they changed too, which I, I wanna point out, and I don't have white ones sitting here. See how these are the white fans? And they have the white cover, but a black cable. 
More often than not, if you're using white fans, it means you're in a white case. And then having black cables makes cable management even worse in a white case. So the white Lee and Lee V2s also have a um, white wire, which is nice. There is a downside to the new thing. Cause you know, there's no such thing as a perfect product. That would be too much to ask for. The single fan, it does not come with a control box, which means it has to be universal. So they provide you this adapter right here, which is a JST header to a three pin ARGB motherboard header. And by clicking this in, it is now adapted to work with any motherboard that has an AR, a, a, a three pin ARGB header or any controller that uses this same header or um, a, a splitter or whatever, you're good to go. That's just a standard fan PWM header. If you need a longer wire, you just get an extension cable. Let me show you what comes with the kit. And this is where I say there are drawbacks. Here is the control box. Also too, the RPM uh, is higher. So these are 2000 RPM fans, whereas the standard ones over here are 1900 RPM fans. This static pressure is 64, or the airflow is 64.5 CFM on the V2s and 58.54 CFM on the V1s. That difference is coming from the extra thickness of the, of the fan. The three millimeters allows for different blade pitch, like I said, which means more airflow. Um, and then in terms of static pressure, the old one is 2.54 millimeters H2O, and these are 2.59. The control box, because you have so much more, you have more lighting and stuff in there, we now have two of the um, SATA power cables. The USB actually connects micro USB to the control box, to the header. And then this right here, this, this little guy, this does two things. One, it's got the PWM input signal and RPM wire to the control box. So you can still control the Lee and Lee fans with, R with PWM of your motherboard. It also allows for pass-through. There's a, on the Elconnect software, there's a button that you can hit that just says motherboard. And basically what that says is no longer use the lighting or the fan control logic built into the L-Connect software with the control box. Just convert that signal to a signal the Lee and Lee fans can make sense of via the control box and then have it sync with whatever your motherboard is doing. So there is that pass-through effect, which is nice. If you don't want to use the L-Connect software, any of your motherboard control software that's already installed in your system will basically be able to con connect with this and then your fans will, will do that. So that's what this header is for. It, it just gives you the fan signal, RPM, as well as the ARGB three pin motherboard connector. So everything will sync that way. The drawbacks, because I know I keep putting that part off there. They have now, with the three pack, taken away the universal aspects and you have proprietary plug on both ends. So you have the plug that goes to the fan, which I've already showed. And then we have this guy. This, this single flat cable, which has basically these same plugs built into it, the three pin ARGB and the four pin fan. It's just, it now has a custom plug to be able to plug this end into the control box. And then this end goes to the fan. Do you see another problem here? The length of this fan wire is ridiculously short. Any full tower case will have a hard time finding a location for this control box to go where the wire can fit both and reach the top and any potential bottom fans or even front fans on the chassis. This guy right here needs to be at least 50% longer in my opinion. This is like, I don't know, I, I, I didn't measure it. It doesn't say on here. My best guess right now would be that this is approximately 16 to 18 inches, which means this is less than a half a meter. But not only is a proprietary plug a problem in terms of extension ability, because these, like I already showed, you can terminate and extend these easily by just a fan header extender and a JST header extender. extender. Easy. You can get it all the length you want out of that. Heck, buy the connectors and make your own. The proprietary plug means you can't do that because it's just that. It's proprietary, okay? Unless you were gonna like, Pull back the sleeving, mark the wires, chop the wires, solder wire in there, re-sleeve it, which I don't think most people are gonna do. I mean, heck, we have the ability to do it and I don't do it because it's a pain in the butt. The length of the wire continues to be a problem. In fact, is it the same length or shorter? 
It's technically shorter than the original wire. Not by a lot, but it is longer. <laughs> Have you ever had a fan wire barely not reach? Yeah, every inch counts. But in terms of length here, uh, if I had to if I measure this, oh wait, 16 and a half inches long. This is the backside? Nope, this is a freedom unit only reading one. How do I do, I started a workout, no. <laughs> how, how do I do Siri on the new watch? It's 419.1 millimeters. Yeah, 419.1 millimeters. And I think their idea is like, well, you would just put the side of the fans, right, closest to the control box. But again, your input to the fans is on one side. So although you could flip it to put the cable direction where you want, sometimes with the way cable routing is, you don't have a choice. So, and if I wanted it to be back here, but there's still gonna be push that way, and the cable has to go on this side because of the, the box or flipping it around for whatever reason, where the cable is, it, it, that it sounds like maybe a, a, a superficial complaint, but I've built enough cases using SP or the, the SL fans. This is not long enough. It could have all been solved by just adding like 50% more, like make these 700 millimeters. So my biggest complaint about the new fan is a new plug on the other end. I wish they had left this end for the fan, how they have it, but then left these ends with the PWM fan header and the JST header alone. Because the new control box too, where'd it go? It actually has two JST headers on it. There's one on either side. Why? So that you can continue to link other Lee and Lee RGB products. They provide you all these cables, and you know what? You're not gonna use most of them because of the daisy chain ability, but what they do provide you, which is the ability to be able to connect fans together via a wire. I hope the one you wanna connect is very close by, because as you can see, so here's, a, here's another scenario I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and paint for you here about why I'm not a huge fan a huge fan of the connector implementation here. Now if we have a fan back here that we know we want an exhaust in, this is the typical layout. And I know this is exactly what Lee and Lee was, was thinking about when they made that cable and its length. Because if it's too long, you have excess cable to have to manage. But I'd rather manage cable than not have a long enough cable. Because at least that long cable is functional. So you can take this cable right here, which is now pretty much rem fully reminiscent of the original cable, which they kind of got rid of that I didn't like. And this one's even thicker, to be honest. Look at that. It is thicker than it by like at least a millimeter or two. There we go. They're up on top. That's connected. You've got your exhaust fan on the, two exhaust fans on the top. And your one exhaust fan on the rear. There we go. <clears throat> if you look at it from my perspective, you have the fan on the backside because of the way the cable management's gonna go. Now you get to look at those ugly pins staring at you. The other problem is, let's say this is your case, right? You're looking at your case, that's a side window. You're on the business end looking in your case. Your wire has to now come in this side. It has to come in this side. Most people, when it comes to routing their fans on the top, either have access to a grommet in the center or probably over here on the back side of the case because they know there's a fan here. If the cable's as short as it is, and you've got to route this around things to get through cable management built into a case that doesn't necessarily line up with where this is, this is probably not gonna be long enough to reach your control box and still allow for other fans, maybe if you have bottom intake fans or even front facing fans to reach the control box. That is my major complaint with the V2, cable length. So anyway, here's the lighting right now. They are set to RGB basically out of the box. In fact, they're not even like moving. Their RGB isn't moving because the controller is technically not on because it's not receiving a signal. I'm just powering it off. <laughs> a battery box, because <laughs> it needs the USB signal to work. So don't think that you can just plug in the power to this and not plug in the USB header. Um, it's required to be plugged into something. I, I, I said back in the day I wanted to like 3D print a couple of stands to put on my desk and then just have these, ah, just didn't sense up. Have, have these being my like gaming cooling fans because they're RGB and they're pretty and stuff. There you go guys, the Lee and Lee V2 fixes one of the problems that I feel like has always sort of existed with the initial, the original ones, but continues a problem of very short wires. Wasn't planning on doing a video about these. I just think that, you know, they're gonna be in my next build. They're in my daughter's build. They're in my current build. They're in the build I didn't take home because I decided I didn't want to take home an Intel 12th gen system. They're not cheap. They're like 34 bucks a fan. 
And then the three packs, like over a hundred bucks. So they are expensive, but they are extremely high quality. The lighting on them is bright. Their lighting modes, I personally like the Elkinex software. I haven't had a problem with it. I mean, I may not have as much fine motor control when it comes to fan curves and stuff. I just, there's some control in there. The lighting effects, some of them are cheesy. Some of them are okay, but again, you can use it with any of your RGB software by just using a pass-through, which is what I do. And so I have the nice vaporwave effect going with my system at home. But it, honestly, it is the fact that I can have everything powering off of one cable. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Sound off down below how you guys feel about the Lee and Lee fans. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the SLs, the ALs, or the Infinities, or now the V2s. People are gonna be like, I love them, I love mine. Or it's, good God, I would never pay that much for a fan. Which team are you? Good God, hell no, or yes, bring them all. These are the Unifan, the Unifan, the Unifan SL2. The Lion Lies fans are good. These, as you might recognize, are the Lewin, the Lewin Lee. Jesus, here we go, only because I know I'm short on time. <laughs>